but something happened. What was the deception in the garden? What fooled us? Because we were all in Adam, you know. So what fooled us? A lie. You know what the lie was? You can become like Elohim. Now, some people say, well, that, that shouldn't be a lie. That, you know, we can all become like Elohim. But how can you become like something when you already are that? You're already in the image and likeness of Elohim, so how can you become it? That was the trick. That was Satan's trick. To keep you from knowing who you really are. Amen. Your true identity Amen. as sons of Adam and Elohim. I often wondered, one of the doctrines, I've been, I've been a little bit going into the doctrines of the of the Christian church because it's full of the sin of Jeroboam. So I've been trying to just go in and see how Satan has infiltrated with little secret doctrines that we believe, because that's what we have to do to be disobedient, is to believe a lie. Right? That's how we're disobedient, to believe a lie. So I thought, hmm, so I was reading one of the great theologians, and one of the statements that he made was, we are no longer in Adam. We are now in Christ. How is that? Adam died, therefore we are no more. Gone. So now we're over here in Christ, in the church. Everything that has to do with Adam is gone. In other words, every word of God that was spoken to Adam, everything was spoken to Noah, everything was spoken to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, everything was spoken from the natural human life and nature, is finished. And now the only thing that exists is the new covenant teachings in Christ. Do you understand what's happened here? They just eliminated any reason to go back to the Old Testament and identify with what's going on in all of history. These little things have infiltrated throughout the history of the church. But the Father is in a day of restoration. The restoration of what? Truth. Truth is His Word. Truth doesn't change. Truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have to go back into those scriptures with a light because who has been redeemed out of Satan's kingdom? Who was in Satan's kingdom? Adam. Adam. So if he's redeemed, does that mean he's disappeared? Or is he coming out of the life that he received under that other kingdom, which isn't life, is death, that that nature was in him and, and manifesting through him and what did the father do? He sent his only begotten son and wove him into a sukkah to be in this sukkah for a period of time. For what purpose? And this is something again where the, where the Christian church the enemy has come in and says, we are no longer under law. We're under grace. But, that Romans 6 scripture 
we, that Paul was writing about, when he says under, he is talking about dominion. Law does not have dominion. It doesn't have power. Law doesn't have power. So he's not talking about power and dominion. Grace has dominion. But what is the other dominion? Sin. Death. And when he talks about the dominion of death, he says in Messiah we have the dominion of life. That's what I said. But it's, doesn't, it's not life. You know what he uses there? Righteousness. The dominion of righteousness. So you have the two spiritual kingdoms that rule humanity. Now, let's watch how the Father is going to deal with this situation. Because He has to deal with it judicially. He's a just Elohim. He's a righteous Elohim. And He's a holy Elohim. So our Father has to do something that is judicial. And I'm sorry because we in the in the in the church we have left the judicial aspect, mm -hmm. the justice of the Father, for some principle of what's called grace. And that has been distorted because we don't understand the dominion of grace, the rule of grace. Because we're not, we don't have law. Somehow we now become lawless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if we became lawless, why did Paul say there's a law working in my mind and there's a law working in my heart? It's a judicial matter of what the Father did through His Son. If we look at Colossians, in Colossians chapter 2, he said, I've, I've transferred you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of my beloved Son. How did he do this? When Yeshua was on the cross, and he was in the process of dying, what did the Father do? See, Yeshua was yielding himself, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was yielding himself to the will of his Father. That was his struggle. He... He always did the will of his Father. He was never out of the will of his Father. We were never qualified to be the Redeemer. So he had to qualify. And the one act that he knew he ultimately would have to face was going to be death. Who wanted him dead? Satan wanted him dead. Because he carried what inside of him? He carried the kingdom of Elohim into humanity. He was manifesting the kingdom all the time. Did Satan like that very much? No. He tried to deceive him. He tried to trick him. He tried to get him off. He tried to get him in unbelief and disobedience. He didn't succeed. Hallelujah. Yeshua was obedient unto death. But he, he, that's where his eyes were all the time. Because he knew the will of his father for himself and what it meant to be a kinsman redeemer of Israel. Amen. Amen. Think about that word, kinsman redeemer. Because I only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that, he said that for a reason. He's a kinsman redeemer, a firstborn, who qualified to bring redemption. So we're looking at the cross. We're looking at the cross. The execution stake. Satan wanted him there. It says, Paul's writing in Corinthians, he said, had those principalities and powers known what was going to happen, they would have never crucified him. Right. So it's a judicial matter with Satan, and the Father knows that he has to accomplish this judicially, or everything will be status quo, and Satan will ultimately kill and destroy everything. That's his nature to do so. We can't have relationships in manifesting 
anything that's coming out of Satan's kingdom and anything that's of his nature. 